All right, so here's an example of um, looking at a population. So an elephant's population's babies have an average weight of 221 pounds with a standard deviation of 15 pounds. So the first question is, are these statistics or are these parameters? So these are actually from a population, so they are going to be parameters. Now, the next question is, what is the probability that a single baby's weight, so we're just looking at one baby, weighs between 210 and 230? So, we are going to have a normal distribution with an average of 221 and a standard deviation of 15. So, to figure out the probability that a baby's weight is between 210 and 230, what we are going to use is we are going to use the normal calculator on StatCrunch. So we're going to bounce over to StatCrunch. And how you do this is you go Stat Calculators, and you're going to go down to Normal. Now the average baby elephant's weight is 210 with a standard deviation of 10, and we want to see if it's between, let's see, 210 and 230 pounds. So we get a probability of about 68%. Great. Now, so we'll just make that point 0 0.068. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to know what's probability a sample of baby elephants, and there's nine of them, have an average weight between 210 and 230. So now, because we're not just looking at a single one, we're looking at a sample of nine, we have this additional information where we have a sample size equal to nine. So instead of looking at a normal distribution that has a standard deviation of 15, now we're gonna be looking at a sample distribution that has a standard error, which is calculated by the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So that's going to give us a normal distribution for our samples it's going to be 221 for our average and then 5 for our standard error. So the probability that a group of baby elephants is between 210 and 230. Let's see, I think it's actually going to be quite a bit greater than 68% because even if I have a baby elephant, let's say that's smaller than 210, because it's a group of baby elephants, I'll probably have a group or I mean a baby elephant that's a little bit bigger than 230, so they'll average each other out. So let's take a look. So I'm going to use the exact same thing, but now my standard deviation, aka my standard error, is 5. Ooh, and look at that. My probability jumped all the way up to 95%. So that will be 0.95. So just be careful, when they say that you have a sample instead of a singleton, you need to change your standard deviation because now you're using your standard error, which remember is sigma divided by the square root of n. Or, if you don't know your population, the standard deviation of your sample divided by the square root of n. And hypothesis testing. Okay. So when we're looking at confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, we're still going to have to check that some conditions are met for a sample to make sure it's good enough. So these are the central limit theorem conditions for chapter 9. So this is when you're just looking at averages. So the first one is that it has to be random. Remember, randomness reduces bias. The second condition is that we have to have a large sample. Now this is different from chapter nine. So for a sample to be large enough, we actually don't have to do any calculations. We just have to make sure our sample is greater than or equal to 25. And a large population is the same as before. We just wanna make sure that our population is 10 times greater than our sample. Okay, so that's all we have to check. Okay. Also, a quick note is 
when you're looking at confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, you will remember from the um, last chapter that in chapter eight, so I'll do this in a different color. In chapter eight, when we did confidence intervals, it was always P hat plus or minus Z times our standard error estimate. Okay, however, when we're looking at chapter nine, what we're doing is that we're not looking at a percentage, we're looking at an average. So it's going to be the average plus or minus, and instead of using the z-score, we're actually going to use something called t times our standard error estimate. All right, now finding t is a really big pain in the butt. Um, that's why we're going to use technology. And the reason is, is because t actually depends on the size of our sample. So um, I'm going to tell you guys why that matters in just a second. So t is so hard to find is because it depends on two things. It depends on the uh, confidence interval that you want, so the confidence interval percentage, and it also depends on something called degrees of freedom. So what degrees of freedom are is that they're defined as the number of ways our samples are independent from each other. So let's say that we have a group of 25 people, okay, and we're only looking at like their body temperature then these people have 25 different ways that they can be independent or their temperatures can be independent from each other because there's 25 different randomly selected people. Now, however, as much as we want them to be completely independent, they actually have one thing in common and that one thing reduces their independence. That one thing is that they're all in the same group, which means that we lose a degree of freedom. So the degree of freedom would actually be 24. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an example of finding a confidence interval using StatCrunch. So for example, let's say um, we get a sample of 31 people. and find that their average body temperature is 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit with a standard deviation of 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Let's construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval. So in order to do that, we are going to go back to stop crunch. So hopefully you didn't close that. So we're going to go to stat crunch. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to go stat. Now because we're using the T score, we're going to go to T, one sample and with summary. On your homework, if they actually give you all of the data points, you're going to say with data, but here we're going to say with sample. So first off, our sample size was 31. The average of our sample was, let me see here, 98.4 with a standard deviation of 0.3. Okay, there we go. All right, and instead of doing a hypothesis test, which we'll do in a minute, we're going to go down to a confidence interval, which we want to be 0.95. Just like in Chapter 8, you can change this, or I mean Chapter 7. So we're going to hit Compute. Okay, and you can see that our degrees of freedom is down to 30. And our uh, confidence interval goes between 98.29, if we rounded it, 98.51. So, let's see, we have... 
98.29 to 98.51. So here's what we would say in our um, construction and confidence interval is that we are 95% sure the populations average body temperature is somewhere between 98.29 degrees Fahrenheit and 98.51 degrees Fahrenheit. So there is a possibility that um, our average body temperature is higher or lower than this, but we think that the probability is only 5% that we're wrong. Now, let's say that we want to see if, for our hypothesis, let's say that we want to test if the average body temperature is equal to what everyone says it is. Let's say we say it's equal to 98.6, and let's say our alternative hypothesis, I read somewhere that it's actually lower these days, so let's say that mu is less than 98.6. So here's how you run a hypothesis test on StatCrunch is you're going to go back to stat, t stats, one sample with summary. We're going to type in the same stuff we just had, so 98.4, 0.3, 31. But now we're testing if the average is 98.6, actually lower. So after we hit compute, what we see is that we get a t test statistic of 3 negative 3.7118. Pay attention to this because this is going to be a question that they ask you on your homework is what the t-stat is. And we also get a p-value of 0.004. So what that means is that our p-value is very low 